Good afternoon. Today we are focusing on the plasma membrane. So some background regarding the plasma membrane. All cells have it. It is the body of a cell to its environment and protects it from the surroundings. It creates a perfect environment for involving pH and ion concentrations to allow cell function. It is described as being selectively permeable to ions and organic molecules. This means that some plas that this means that the plasma membrane can allow some material to pass through it while prohibiting passage of other molecules, such as allowing oxygen, carbon dioxide to pass through easily, ions, etc. Some of them not so easily. Charged amino acids, big protein molecules. Cells suddenly receive and send chemical messages to and from the other cells. It forms a barrier between the cytoplasm inside the cell and the environment outside the cell. If you did not have a plasma membrane present, there would be no cell. The membrane also protects and supports the cell and controls everything that enters and leaves it. This allows the permission of certain substances to pass through while keeping others in, others in or out. So with regard to its role as structural support and protection, as I said before, it separates the cytoplasm from the extracellular fluid. This allows activities such as transcription, translation, production of ATP to occur inside the cell, while minimising the impact of the external environment. It also provides structural support by binding to the cytoskeleton. With regards to regulation of substances moving in and out of the cell, it's semi-permeable, allows nutrients, organic molecules, ions, water and oxygen are allowed into the cell, while waste and toxins are blocked or expelled out of the cell. And also with regards to communication and cell signaling, this, com this facilitates communication between cells. Proteins and carbohydrates in the membrane create a unique cellular marker which permits other cells to recognise it. This also has the sectors that, that, that molecules bind to to carry out specific tasks. The composition of the plasma membrane is mainly phospholipids which are also composed of fatty acids and alcohol. These are arranged in two layers known as a phospholipid, phospholipid bilayer with a hydrophobic or water heating interior and a hydrophilic or water loving exterior. Each phospholipid molecule has a head and two, two tails. The head is referred to as hydrophilic since it loves water and the tail is referred to as hydrophobic since it hates water. The water feeding tails are on the interior side and, and point outwards towards either the cytoplasm or the fluid that surrounds the cell. The polar head group and fatty acid chains are attached by a free carbon glycerol unit. Molecules which are hydrophobic can easily pass through the plasma membrane if they are small enough because they are water heating like the interior of the membrane. Molecules that are hydrophilic on the other hand cannot pass through the plasma membrane at least not without help because they are water loving like the exterior of the membrane. As well as all stuff mentioned previously it also has other molecules such as lipids and proteins. Protein channels which span the full membrane have a space within them because they are used to transport materials into or out of the cell. Transmembrane proteins which span across the membrane and can have a variety of functions. Peripheral proteins which are only found on one side of the membrane, they can be found on either the cytoplasmic side or the outside of the membrane. Glycoproteins which consist of a protein in the plasma membrane with chains of carbohydrates projecting out of the cell. Glycolipids which are chains of carbohydrates attached directly to a lipid in the membrane. Both glycoproteins and glycolipids act as labels to identify the cell. And there is also filaments of cytoskeleton, which are found alongside the cytoplasm at the side of the membrane and provide a scaffolding for the membrane. As you can see here, this is the composition of the plasma membrane as described in the previous slides. They have the phospholipid bilayers with the hydrophobic tails, hydrophilic, uh, hydrophobic tails and hydrophilic heads. You also have the glycolipids, the cholesterol proteins, the integral, the, sorry, the cholesterol, the integral proteins, the peripheral proteins, etc. These components in a bit more depth, right? So, as I said before, the phospholipid bi bilayer is comprised of amphiphatic molecules called phospholipids. So, phospholipids, so it's got hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So, it's got the hydrophilic uh, heads and hydrophobic tails. So, this so these, these molecules consist of a hydrophilic water loving head and a hydrophobic water heating tail. These two then create two distinct regions on the cell membrane a hydrophobic interior and a hydropho hydrophilic exterior. So I can see in the diagram on the right hand side. The long carbon chains in a hydrophobic region are described as being saturated or unsaturated. Saturated chains contain only single, single carbon and carbon bonds, whereas unsaturated chains contain single carbon and carbon bonds and some double carbon to carbon bonds. These are, affect the fluidity of a membrane, particularly at low temperatures. 
So you can see here as well the polar hydrophilic head, the non-polar hydrophobic fatty acid tails, and the polar hydrophilic head with an aqueous environment of the phospholipid bilayer. So in essence, the steroid cholesterol, one of the components of the plasma membrane, plays a significant role with the maintenance of plasma membrane fluidity with respect to the temperature of the environment. In moderate temperatures, cholesterol decreases the movement of the phospholipid bilayer, which thus maintains the barrier. In low temperatures, cholesterol stops the phospholipid bilayer from solidifying and maintains the permeability of the plasma membrane. Both cell membranes have one cholesterol per phospholipid, whereas bacterial cell membranes have none. Cholesterol stiffens the cell membrane and decreases the permeability of water-soluble molecules. Without cholesterol, there will be a need to have a cell wall around our cells to maintain a cell shape. So with regards to the integral proteins, these are integrated into the hydrophobic interior of the phospholipid bilayer. They can either only go partially into the hydrophobic interior or span across the entire membrane, which are then known as transmembrane proteins. Transmembrane proteins are the most abundant proteins of the plasma membrane. Then there's also peripheral membrane proteins, which are usually attached to integral proteins or phospholipids. These are found on the surfaces inside the outside of the membrane. They do not extend into the hydrophobic interior of the membrane. Instead, they are usually, usually, usually attached on the surface of the membrane. So looking at looking into that into a bit more detail, these transmembrane proteins regions they are physically embedded into the hydrophobic portion of the phospholipid bilayer. In most transmembrane proteins, at the, at the transmembrane segment, each is folded into an alpha helix structure. With regards to the lipid and the protein, the amino acid of the protein is covalently attached to a lipid. Peripheral extrinsic membrane proteins, these are non-covalently bound either to the integral membrane proteins that project out from the membrane or to polar head groups of phospholipids. These peripheral proteins can attach and remove themselves. A hormone is an example of a peripheral protein. So the function of the membrane's proteins are quite important and are very, very important in these aspects. Transport, energy transduction, cell signaling, cell recognition, metabolism and cell-to-cell -cell contact. So I want to mention this aspect as well, which can pop up in quite a lot of multiple choice questions. How do you refer to as a plasma membrane? So it's semi-permeable and a fluid mosaic model. So, these, so the fluid mosaic model experiments were conducted by Fry and Edidin, which showed that the phospholipid bilayer and proteins were laterally mobile. In fact, all phospholipids are laterally mobile to a high degree. Phospholipids can flip-flop rarely and can invert across the bilayer, but very, it happens very, very rarely. The high degree of fluidity seen in membranes, along with the integration of proteins, which, which are also mobile, gives us a predominant theory of the plasma membrane known as the fluid mosaic model. Just something you need to know is just a fluid mosaic model. We don't need to know this too much in detail, the explanation of that. I just thought I'd throw it in there, you know. The final thing I want to discuss is what happens when a membrane does not function properly. So first of all, a couple of examples here, right? You can get hemochromatosis, which is an iron disorder in which an increased amount of iron is transferred across the membranes of intestinal cells and into the body. Mutation in the membrane protein gene HFE, which codes for homeostatic iron regulator protein. So this protein functions to regulate iron absorption by regulating the interaction of the transferrin receptor with transferrin. So that's one condition that can arise, hemochromatosis. A second condition that can arise is cystic fibrosis. And this arises as a result of the mutation of a mutation in the CFTR gene. The CFTR gene makes the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductor the, the, uh, conductance regulator protein. And this is involved in moving chloride ions to the outside of the cells. So that's just a couple of examples of what can go wrong with a cell if there's improper membrane function. So hemochromatosis and cystic fibrosis. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. Uh, the next video will be on the brain and its uh, function, diagnosis and treatment of diseases, etc. Thanks very much once again.